Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about crabs. Well, crustaceans. We'll get more into that in a minute. You may have remembered on my old channel that uh, I was um, talking about my new Agla at the time. Here's one of them. A little crabby girl. It's a female Agla. And uh, in that time, since I've been kind of on my hiatus, I have been breeding them a little bit. And I've got a few babies, and I'm just trying to figure them out. These little alien creatures. <laughs> well, she's going to start retreating here. But, bask in the glory of crab. Hello everyone, Fish Geek Girl back with another video. Um, happy Memorial Day weekend for those of you who are watching. Um, maybe this is going to be posted. I'm hoping it's going to be posted by Memorial Day. So, I hope you guys have had a good weekend. I um, want to take a little uh, moment here to touch on um, the Live Bearer Convention and Killifish Convention I went to last weekend. Um, I went and gave a talk in Ohio, and then I went and did the Killifish Live Bearer Combo Convention the next day in Kalamazoo and um, in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So it was a kind of a hectic weekend for me, and I think this week I've been kind of in recovery mode. But uh, I did pick up some fish while I was there. Um, sadly, not really any live bears of any, like, any rare live bears I was hoping to get. Um, I think a lot of that's just because I was pretty tired and I didn't stay very long. Kind of did my swap and um, showed off some of my Daniels. I sold, like, one bag of long fins and some other goodies. So, um a pretty good weekend all in all. Um, things I did pick up, while not necessarily live bearers and killies, um, I did get uh, a pair of killifish, um, but um, that was about it. Um, the live bearer side of things, I won some Montezuma sword tails in a raffle in Ohio that were kind of an aquarium strain, but um, not to say there weren't, wasn't cool stuff. I heard there was a, more of a killifish representation, so um, the auction the next day, um, from who, who I had heard from who had went was largely a lot of uh, bear killifish. So, um, regardless, it was um, a good weekend. Got some good pickups. Um, some of the fish that I did get, I picked up a couple um, new species of, well, species new to me of um, Elisoma or pygmy sunfish. So, I they have location and they were collected in Florida. So, that was pretty cool. I've been wanting those guys for a while. Kyo is trying to say hi. <laughs> so you're gonna find Kyo is gonna probably chime in on a lot of these videos. Um, I don't like to lock him out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, he would probably be louder if I did, to be honest. If I'm talking in a room and he's locked out of it, mm -mm. no good. <laughs> so yeah, so overall, good weekend with the live bears and stuff, uh, even if I didn't really take home any live bears, but um, got lots of other fun projects instead. Got the Pygmy Sunfish, um, picked up a really cool Cory Cat, and um, some miscellaneous things I kind of won in a raffle. Got a uh, new Tetra species. I also, this past week, got in an order from Wet Spot. Um, the wet spot out in um, Portland, Oregon. They, uh, they ship fish online. Um, just give them a little shout out. They've got some really rare stuff. Um, so I got some uh, some fish from that that I'm still kind of acclimating. Well, they're, they're acclimated, but I'm still quarantining and getting a feel for how they are because some of them are wild caught. So uh, I've got some um, some garamis that I'm really excited about. Uh, Paris Rickthes species. And then I've got um, some uh, high fin, great fin barbs, and um, some uh, Coste Tetras that I'm kind of excited about as well. So um, yeah, overall some really neat fish pickups, but for the rest of the summer I'm hoping to, um, I may still acquire some fish here and there, but I'm hoping to kind of calm it down on the swaps so I can focus on producing the fish that people are already wanting from me. So something people have also been hanging up about are my Agla. So I've produced um, some young agla, which are a type of, uh, that you saw in the beginning of this video. They are a type of unique 
I say unique to freshwater type of crustacean because they're actually fairly common in salt water, but there's just not a lot of representation in the freshwater side of things, and they're not at all common in the hobby. Um, so this is a Agla platensis as a species. Um, when I've talked about it to people, a lot of people don't know what they are. I didn't know what they were until up, up until about a year ago, and then I kind of made it my mission to get them and work with them and uh, breed them. And I have succeeded in getting some babies. Um, turns out they'll uh, carry their eggs and they'll be buried just like a crayfish. But unlike you know crayfish, they're shaped a little differently, and they're related to hermit crabs, and they're just kind of these weird, weird critters. Um, in my experience, I they have been just fine on their own. Um, they have been fine with other fish as well. I have not seen them take down other fish, and actually, since getting babies, I haven't even seen them go after the babies. Um, that being said, I did remove most of them from the parents. So. Uh, Kind of a cool, cool critter um, in my fish room. And I, my fish room is usually cooler. And um, so when we talk about cool critter, they literally like to be in cooler water. So Aglo like to be about, well, the ideally like low 70s or maybe like mid to upper 60s is what I'm noticing. Um, they seem to breed really well in the winter. Now it's getting a little bit warmer and I'm gonna keep an eye on them, but I do have them upstairs in an unheated tank. Um, I use crushed coral. So a lot of times with invertebrates, you want to make sure you're adding crushed coral. So if they have calcium, like added calcium for the exoskeleton, um, just this is a must um, in my experience. So I do find the agla like to bury themselves a little bit too, um, which is interesting. If you have an aragonite sand, I think they'd love that a lot because they could just bury themselves in it, but then they're having added um, calcium from the, the, the sand. So I'm going to show you guys just some of the agla that I have. Um, I know you got a teaser of these guys in the beginning of the video, and I'm going to show you their babies and just kind of talk about my experience keeping them. Um, again, I think that they, they go fine with other fish. I kept them with Danios for a while, didn't notice any losses. I'm not sure about catfish. The thing is, they like to be cool, so you don't want to keep them anything that likes to be warm. Um, there's sometimes known as freshwater squat lobsters, what they're sold as, or cockroach crab, uh, whatever you want to call them. They're just a really neat organism. And um, I hope this video can make you guys fall in love with them. So I'll flip it around and we'll go around the fish room with these guys. So I thought I was going to have to poke around to get these guys to come out for you, but here's the male just showing off. The male Agla. Um, looks like he's uh, not being shy right now. So um, I noticed with the males, they tend to be almost like a bluey kind of color with like, um, it's subtle. And then they've got a, just a different shape to them. They're a little bigger. And the tips of their fin, or sorry, the tips of their um, claws are like almost orange. Um, I don't notice this as much with the females. Because he's got a little bit of a different body shape to him. Um, he's on the prowl. I don't know if the dip in temperatures recently has got him feeling a type of way. Um, it's here in Michigan. It's springtime. Well, almost summer, actually. Memorial Day weekend is this weekend. And um, the temperature's got to be a little a little low in the night. So it got down to about 68 degrees or so. Um, actually, you can see right here it's um, sub-70. So a uh, little fun fact about Agla, um, if I haven't said this already in the video, uh, they like to be cool. It's their preferred temperature to be cool. Um, at the most, maybe mid-70s, but um, if you get to, like, upper 70s, you're pushing your luck with these guys. Um, they really do like cool. So, um, my friend who collects, like, uh, Gymnogeos, which are a type of, uh, Gymnogeophagus, um, which are a type of cichlid in, like, uh, Central, South America, actually South America, they're in, like, Uruguay and stuff. Um, so those, uh, those cichlids like to be kept cool and all these habitats there are a little bit cooler than what you'd expect for South America. <clears throat> so um at any rate um these guys I guess are found alongside I'm guessing I'm found alongside the Gymnogeos. Um my friend collects them quite a bit and he's sent me pictures of uh wild agla. So anyway they're they're happy. It's uh it's cool and um they seem to enjoy the cooler temps. So as you can see here, I've got my igla. Um, there's one out right here, there's the boy, and underneath is one of the females. So I have um, an adult trio, 
I've got one boy and two girls and they seem to be doing very well. I've not noticed any aggression with these guys. Um, they don't seem to harm each other. Um, and like I said, I even have some babies that are, believe it or not, in this tank. Um, I've had some difficulty with these guys and knowing how many babies I have. And the reason I say that is because for whatever reason, the babies are pretty good at hiding. Um, they come out kind of looking like, um, like little tiny miniature versions of the adults, but they're the size of, if you have um, Neocaridina shrimp or Caridina, um, these babies are like roughly that size. They are absolutely minuscule. I'm finding that they don't grow super duper quick, but um, they are, yeah, they don't seem to mess with them too much, which is interesting. Um, these guys seem to be scavengers. A lot of times I'll drop in, I have axolotls, so I'll use like the salmon pellets with these guys. They go nuts. They love them. Um, I'll eat crushed up flake food sometimes, and then, um, so anything sinking wafers and uh, frozen food they actually like quite a bit too. I've done frozen bloodworms in here and they'll nibble on that. So anything meaty that they can smell, um, they tend to hide a lot, but once the food is dropped in here, they have a feast and they'll come out of hiding. Um, I'm going to actually go in here and check some of the females because um, they're pretty good at hiding when they are um, actually carrying eggs. So I found both my females have been carrying eggs around the same time. I'm still trying to get a feel for how often they um, do breed. Um, my hope is that they breed as much as like your standard crayfish or um, shrimp and things of that nature, like other types of crustaceans. But of course, being a kind of a different organism, I don't know if that's the case or not. They could be seasonal. Um, it could be now that it's getting warming up, maybe they won't breed as much, but I'm trying to figure that out about them. So I'm going to go in and take a look and see if this girl under here is, has any eggs on her. Um, and then see if her um, other, the other female maybe has some eggs or not. So yeah, that's these guys. So I took out both females just to be sure, but um, neither of them appear to have any eggs on them. If they did, they would be underneath. If they did, they'd be underneath the tail, kind of tucked right here, but you can see this female does not have any. So um, I'll drop her back in. Um, so this is uh, the setup I have for them right now. Um, yeah, today it's just a hair above 70 maybe, or maybe 70 on the dot. Got a lot of hair algae in here. Got some uh, duckweed, hornwort. It's a 10 gallon tank and it seems plenty large enough for um, for the trio, so that's what I have in here. Um, there have I have sighted some babies in here. Um, I don't see any out and about right now, so I'm gonna show you guys the ones that I separated just so you get an idea. Okay, so hopefully you can see here. Um, I'm trying to focus. So this is, these are a couple baby agla, and as you can see, they're actively burying themselves. There's one over here, and this is kind of an example of like kind of aragonite type crushed coral the sand type substrate, he will bury himself completely, and as well this one right here. And these guys are hmm, maybe about a month old or so, I forget when these guys first came out, but they seem to be kind of slow growing. I've been giving them like crushed up flakes and things that kind of sink in there, and um, again, they're scavengers, so I'm just kind of throwing a little bit in there, but I'm not trying to go too crazy, um, just because I don't want to overdo it on these guys. But yeah, there's a couple of them in here. This is like a five gallon tank. Um, I think there are some in here as well, but I have not seen them. And the issue is that this tank is so, um, just there's so much stuff in here that there's just so many places that they could hide. Um, what I found is that they will cling to like filters and plants and things, and you can shake out those filters and plants and still not have any of these guys um, come out. So, there might be some in here. If there are, I have not really seen them much. Um, but actually, I haven't seen them at all. So it's been kind of a little bit frustrating with them because they do, they do bury themselves and they do cling to things. And um, you know, even if you feed them and stuff, they're pretty shy. Um, I have noticed that they tend to come out more at night. So for whatever reason, at night, I can usually shine a light in here and see a few of them. Um, again, not really this tank as much. And there were quite a few to begin with, so it is a little bit of a... Just trial and error and just trying to see what works for these guys. Um, so I know I have at least a handful that are in the other tank. 
this tank for whatever reason. I just almost never see them. And I've got a third tank that I split them into. Um, so it's been a it's been a bit of a mystery. I, I do use sponge filters with all of them. Um, so yeah, you can see here they are buried and. Uh, living their best life, I guess. A little crabby life. Um, see. Oh, oh, there's the biggest one. I just went scooting in the back there. I don't know if you saw him. There he comes. So this is my, so far, my biggest one. So yeah, there's at least three that are in here. Oh, come on, buddy. My camera is not the happiest at focusing. Or it doesn't love focusing on these guys. But there is one right here. My largest agla. Um, one batch is a little bit older than the other, but um, for whatever reason, he's just the winner. Um, and he is the largest. And uh, seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, I say he, but realistically, I don't know if it's a male or female at this stage. It's a little too young to tell. But there's a little baby egla. And isn't it adorable? I think it's adorable. They do that little scoot backwards kind of thing that a lot of shrimp and stuff do, like a lot of crustaceans do. I love it. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. And um, this guy might be going in for the uh, burying, too. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, I'm going to place in a few um, photos and videos here of the aqua when. I did actually get documentation of them when they first hatched and what the buried females looked like and things like that. So I'm going to throw some videos and photos of that after this here um, for you to see and um, that way you can sort of get an idea of what they look like and uh, we'll give a few moments for that and then I'll catch you back here and we'll wrap this up. So we have baby Agla. Do you see them? They are so tiny. I am in love. I love this so much. So hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something about crustaceans that you didn't know before. Um, like this video, subscribe, comment if you have any questions or ideas of what you'd like to see next. And I'll see you guys next week.